What the fuck? You are stronger than all this than me This is Little Nightmares 2, developed by Tarsier Studios and published by Bandai Namco. Little Nightmares 2 is a 2.5D physics puzzle game with horror elements. You play Mono, a diminutive trench coat lad with a bag on their head, who is trying to find the source of a mysterious signal and hopefully not be eaten along the way. Little Nightmares 2 plays similarly to the previous entry. Gameplay is broken up into platforming segments, light physics puzzles, stealth and chases. All sections have a bit of trial and error to them, but the game's checkpointing is generous so it's rarely a point of frustration. The sequel adds a couple of new elements. Mono is occasionally accompanied by Six, the protagonist from the last game, who assists Mono along the way by pointing out objects of interest or helping them to clear large jumps, or as a signal to the player when to hide and when to run. Little Nightmares 2 also adds combat sections to the game, where Mono lugs around something heavy and then laboriously swings it at a creature with questionable range. I really dislike these sections. My chief frustration with the combat is trying to determine the range of the weapon, as I find I am almost always overestimating the swing length. This would be fine if I could just attempt another swing, but encounters are typically one-hit kills and you're forced to start the section over. Accepting the combat sections, Little Nightmares 2 is a solid follow-up to the original. The atmosphere is creepy, the creature designs are very disturbing, particularly the snake neck teacher lady. The central mystery is intriguing and I am also interested in knowing what happened to Six between games. Little Nightmares 2 is available on PC, PS4, Xbox One and Nintendo Switch. I must, must turn off, must unscramble porn channel, gotta see standard definition nips. This is Monster Hunter Rise, developed and published by Capcom. In Monster Hunter Rise, you play the newest guild hunter assigned to Camera Village. The village is soon to be hit by the Rampage, a once in a generation event where the monsters in the area go berserk, descend upon the village en masse. Your task then is to train yourself up in preparation and to eventually defend the village. Gameplay wise, Monster Hunter Rise is a typical Monster Hunter game. Go out into a large area to hunt down a troublesome monster, you have a multi-stage battle with said monster, then when prevailing you acquire materials from the monster which you then use to improve your gear or to build better gear. Then you go out and hunt stronger monsters. After many entries and iterations on the Monster Hunter formula, the game is heavy with systems and subsystems that will take a newcomer a good amount of time to understand. I'm sure I don't even understand most of the systems. Broadly speaking then, Monster Hunter Rise has you tackling large monsters with a variety of weapons and support equipment. There are a number of different weapon classes with different movesets, strengths and weaknesses. Players need to manage their stamina during combat, avoid devastating attacks from the monsters and wait for the right moment to strike. Monster Hunter Rise adds some new gameplay elements. The wire bug allows the hunter greater mobility in combat, letting them quickly recover from attacks or dodge out of the way. It can also be used in conjunction with your weapon to perform powerful attacks. The wire bug can also be used to perform wyvern riding, which allows you to momentarily puppeteer a monster and have it attack another monster, causing considerable damage in the process. Outside of combat, it is used for traversal across and vertically up the map. The game also adds another animal partner in addition to the palico cat, the palamute, which is a dog. 
But Palamute is a more aggressive support partner as it attacks monsters with you. It's also large enough that you can ride around on it, which is immensely satisfying. It can even drift. Don't ask cow. A new mode plays into the Rampage story concept. It's a merging of tower defense and one-to-one -one combat against weaker but more numerous monsters that you would encounter in the game normally. The hunter builds defensive installations like traps and ballistae to slow down incoming monster waves and then takes to the field themselves to deliver some extra damage. It is a much more arcadey mode than the game proper. Monster Hunter Rise is a lot of fun, it's a nice change of setting for Monster Hunter World and retains the dumb, zany energy of the series. Monster Hunter Rise is available exclusively on Nintendo Switch with a PC port to follow in 2022. Down that fucking rock. This is Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, developed and published by Nintendo. Super Mario 3D World is an updated port of the Wii U title, added multiplayer support and technical improvements. Super Mario 3D World introduced the cat suit to the series, allowing players to run up walls, run faster, and add a swipe attack. Super Mario 3D World is a continuation of the level-based Mario games where players can tackle self-contained levels under a generous time limit. There is a lot of variety across the different levels. Mario and friends travel to different, if familiar, lands and complete levels to earn enough stars to move to the next land. Even if it sounds formulaic, these Mario games are a bit like pizza. Even when they're bad, they're still pretty good. Bowser's Fury, on the other hand, is an additional standalone title bundled with Super Mario 3D World and a lot more interesting. Bowser's Fury transports Mario to Lake Lapcat, where you will have to team up with Bowser Jr. to help placate Bowser, who is being corrupted by some dark goo thing, and has become Godzilla. Uh, I mean, Fury Bowser. Lake Lapcat is a small sandbox area with multiple mini-levels dotted about. Mario needs to collect cat shines in these areas to both subdue Fury Bowser and to open more areas to explore. Finding enough cat shines eventually unlocks Mario's Super Saiyan, I mean, Mario's Giga Cat form. He can then go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Fury Bowser. Bowser's Fury is an interesting mode and can be seen as a kind of smaller scope Super Mario game, like a single condensed world of Super Mario Odyssey. It only requires 50 cat shines to finish, which won't take very long, even with Fury Bowser showing up every couple of minutes. I would be interested to see if they use something similar as stop gaps between larger Mario titles. Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury is available exclusively on Nintendo Switch. Uh, uh. Oh. <laughs> we regret to inform you, Mario is dead. This is Persona 5 Strikers developed by Omega Force and published by Atlas. Persona 5 Strikers is set less than one year after the events of Persona 5. It sees the main cast getting ready for summer vacation. However, heart-changing events, similar to what occurred previously, have begun to be reported all over Japan, and the police believe the Phantom Thieves are to blame. The reunited party must then forego their holiday plans to take a road trip across Japan to solve the mystery and clear their names. While Persona 5 Strikers initially presents as a 1v1000 brawler, its merging of the traditional turn-based combat of the series with the action brawler combat Omega Force is better known for leads to Striker's combat system becoming quite complex quite quickly. You have access to all the Phantom Thieves from early in the game. Each character has different attack patterns and different attack modifiers. For example, Fox can counter enemy attacks, Skull can charge his attacks and receive super armor, and Mona can turn into a cat plus. Thing. 
Each character is also accompanied by a persona, a manifestation of their id, which has its own abilities and elemental affinities. Enemies will similarly have their own skills and elemental affinities, and they will use them often. Combat then plays out in small arenas where four Phantom Thieves, one player controlled, three game controlled, will face dozens of enemies at a time, trying to match skills against enemy weaknesses while attempting to avoid rapid attacks. Combat is chaotic and colourful, with many effects firing off, party members shouting advice, or warnings, or asking to be tagged in, or to group up for a party attack. Combat is a lot of fun, but can be punishing. This is not like typical warrior style games, you do need to be mindful of your tactics and casual button mashing won't get you very far. Additionally, with so much going on, it can be difficult to parse what is actually happening in the fight. The camera is not your friend and I have suffered many attacks coming from off screen while the camera whirled about the place. Outside of combat, the game showcases some excellent character moments and voice work. As a fan of Persona 5, returning to these characters felt like reuniting with long lost friends. I was glad to see the actors hadn't lost a beat playing these characters, and it was a joy to spend time with them as they travelled across Japan solving mysteries. That said, if you haven't played Persona 5, you will be lost playing Persona 5 Strikers. This game is made very much for fans of the original JRPG title. While the combat system isn't perfect and occasionally rage-inducing, I really enjoyed Persona 5 Strikers overall, and I am well on my way to completing it to 100%. Persona 5 Strikers is available on PC, PS4, and Nintendo Switch. Which is, where's the issue? Uh, the toilet? Toilet. I was looking for all of us. Everybody was looking for the toilet. I was working on it, Morgana. Those were some of the games I played for February 2021. Biggest standout for me is Persona 5 Strikers. I just really, really like the Persona 5 characters. Gameplay is really fun. I just had a blast playing it. And if you are a fan of Persona 5, then you really need to get your hands on this. After that, Monster Hunter Rise is also really good. It has the great um, kind of gameplay loop of going out to fight difficult monsters and then building up your gear over time to make better gear. and fight better monsters and so on. I really like Monster Hunter World. Monster Hunter Rise is very similar with some uh, interesting changes and it's somewhat more streamlined for running on a portable device. So I'm getting a lot of fun out of Monster Hunter Rise and it's also getting some fairly regular update. Plenty more to come on that. Super Mario 3D World is Super Mario 3D World. You kind of know what you're getting at this point. It's fun, nothing like earth shatteringly new or anything. Bowser's Fury is really interesting. That actually kept me engaged much more than the 3D World did. I just really like the Fury Bowser Kaiju stuff. Uh, he gets a little bit annoying because he shows up fairly often, but it's hard to argue with a, a Mario game like that because it's it's just it's really fun to play and it handles really well. Little Nightmare 2 is suitably creepy, very off-putting stuff. Uh, I really like Little Nightmares 1. Little Nightmare 2 is also really good, other than the combat stuff, which if you watched any of the the Foley plays Little Nightmares 2 for a bit, he'll know I got pretty salty about it. There are also standalone videos for each of the other games, so Monster Hunter Rise, Persona 5 Strikers, and Bowser's Fury, not one for Super Mario 3D World, because it's like, you know, you know what that game is. Looking into next month, so I swapped in Monster Hunter Rise for Atelier Ryza 2, just because I was not just not going to have enough time to do Ryza, because I was really into Monster Hunter at the time. So... Atelier Ryza 2 will be in the March video instead. Joining that will be a puzzle game called Maquette, which is a kind of micro macro um, 3D puzzle game. It's got a really interesting concept where you are inhabiting the world that the puzzle is happening in, but there's also a scale model of that world that you can manipulate, and manipulating that manipulates the, the greater world, and there's an even bigger world outside of that, and outside of that, and so on. It's a really interesting concept. Yakuza Like a Dragon, yes, that came out like a good while ago, but it had a PS5 release, um, so I'm finally getting a chance to play it. If you're familiar with the Yakuza series, this one's a little bit different because, one, well, it's a new protagonist, but also it's completely turn-based, which is very odd for the Yakuza series. And for the fourth game, I was going to do Bravely Default 2. I'm still intending to do it, but I recognize that Atelier Ryza and Yakuza Like a Dragon are both huge games and Bravely Default 2 is also a huge game. So that may have to be subbed out. I don't know yet. That's just because I haven't started it. So I don't know, that might that might end up getting subbed out. So keep an eye on that. Elsewhere on the channel, I'm continuing my weekly news recap. So there's been plenty of those every week. 
uh, every Monday, recorded on a Sunday, I just recap the, the game industry news for that week, uh, any new announcements, new releases, and the standard industry shit that, that happens behind behind the scenes. Also, I'll be looking into getting back to uh, Let's Plays and some live streaming, but I just don't know what game to do. Um, if you have a game you'd like to suggest for either, um, either for offline LPs that I can edit, um, or for live streams that um, you can watch in the moment and see me fuck up, <laughs> see me fuck up in the moment, I don't know. Anyway, let me know what you thought. Uh, games of March hopefully will be a little bit faster than games of February, but faster does not mean uh, fast. <laughs> so there's probably still a while yet. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, uh, and I'll see you next time.